What is your neighborhood's most important asset? A, housing, B, location, C, sense of community, or D, access to recreational and cultural opportunities? What industry can have the greatest economic impact on Detroit's future? A, freight logistics and trade, which I talked a little bit about. B, manufacturing, which certainly represents a lot of our history. C, healthcare. D, small business growth and entrepreneurship. Or E, emerging industries such as green, creative, or technology-based. And so, if we had, as we think about diversifying our economy away from just a traditional strong manufacturing economy, what, a, what, what industry represented here do you think has the most opportunity for impact on the city's future? I'm Mark Covington. I'm from the east side of Detroit, born and raised on Georgia Street. Well, it started in uh, April of 2008. Um, I, I kind of slipped into it. Um, the, the garden came about because I wanted to stop people from dumping on some vacant lots. That, um, and I, I mean, they were dumping on it so much, you know, I needed to figure out a way to keep people from dumping on it after I cleaned them up when I decided to plant some food. I'm chairman and founder of Georgia Street Community Collective, uh, Georgia Street Community Gardens. Uh, it's a community garden um, and a collaboration of people uh, from outside the community and inside the community to uh, help sustain and re redevelop our neighborhood. Uh, community garden is a flower, vegetable, or fruit garden uh, producing food that the community can come in and pick or have. A community market garden is a garden that sells produce. Um, we're a regular community garden, you know, I mean, every, it is, everything's free. We have, there's a seven member board, um, and we have, uh, I would say a core group of 15 volunteers um, for different events, uh, not in the gardens. In the gardens we have different groups that come out to help, and sometimes we have individuals that come out and help them. How important is it for Detroiters to have access to jobs in Detroit? A, very important. B, somewhat important, C, not very important, or D, not important. And so it's important uh, for us to get this feedback because we could easily say, well, there's this sort of juxtaposition of, is it okay for Detroiters to just have access to jobs in the region, or is it important that Detroiters have opportunities to secure employment in the city in which they live? Um, the market gardens can provide a little bit of an economic um, 
stability to, to a neighborhood. Uh, if, you know, being able to sell can put a little money in your pocket. It's not going to be make you rich, but uh, you know, it's, it's like you know being able to pay your light and gas bill and then having a few dollars left over. You know, not not using the garden to pay your light and gas, but if, if you can afford to pay your light and gas now and you're sitting at home at the end of the month and you don't have anything left. You know, uh, it, it could supplement your income. I think. Okay. And so, eighty-nine percent of you um, would agree that it's very important for Detroiters to have access to jobs actually in Detroit, and nine percent of you um, agree that um, it's important for Detroiters to have access to jobs in Detroit. So, certainly, support for this um, job center growth. As it relates to blight elimination, many of you may be familiar with the mayor's goals to get 3,000 homes demolished by the end of the first year in office, and then 10,000 homes down by the end of the mayor's first term, and certainly we're on track to accomplish that goal. And as it relates to vacant land, we are working very closely with the Detroit Land Bank as well as the Michigan State Land Bank to think about how we can um, assemble key vacant parcels in the city, how we can market those properties for economic development opportunities, and then also thinking about ways in which we can improve the process by which opportunities for residents and community-based organizations to acquire property from the city to ensure that it actually gets into the hands of people who are going to be responsible with that land. I guess I would the way I would do it is people that wants want to do community gardens would come in and have a, a place like a neighborhood city hall. They can go in and register if they want to do a community garden. Uh, if they are in, interested in buying or leasing the land and make that be some type of program. At forty-two thousand three hundred of vacant parcels are actually publicly owned, and so that includes public ownership of the city, Wayne County, um, and then also the state of Michigan. Uh, you know, find out you know who owns the property so you can get permission to use it, uh, be it the city or privately owned, um, and, and have the soil test. And then go into it. There's a, like a garden research program. You can become a member of the garden research program, <clears throat> and uh, by participating in different educational programs and um, helping out at other gardens, you can receive resources uh, of seedlings and different things that you would need for a garden certainly an opportunity for the public entities to come together and think about the ways in which, again, they can make public land available for economic development purposes. I, I, I think they should try to make them more accessible to the citizens, um, you know, by purchasing or leasing or, you know, uh, the adopt a lot program seem to be working pretty good. but. Um, and then you could sign some type of contract or something saying that it would be specifically for that. Um, that way the city is not, you know, selling land or for cheap and then it's turned around and flipped over. You know, if, if, they, if something was to happen to it, uh, like they wanted to sell it or not do the community garden anymore, it would go back to the city. Um, that's my idea of how that would work. That way the city wouldn't have to worry about, you know, somebody trying to make money off of the land. Like in our case, I think we, we need the vacant lots in our possession so we can make sure that we keep a community garden in our neighborhood. Um, you know, anything can happen. Somebody can come in and want to build more houses or something, but I think even even that that's good. But I think a community garden in the neighborhood should uh, should be something that that stays, especially especially the arts. <laughs> and uh, community gardens statistically have proven that um, that you can raise property values uh, by having a community garden in the neighborhood. So um, it's happened here with ours, you know, and a number of neighbors have said that their assessed value of their houses have gone up, their properties have gone up. Um, and it, it, like I said, it, it deters crime. It helps deter, to deter crime of uh, people being out in the, in the gardens. You know, it, it's making people visible. People are walking the neighborhood because most of the time they're walking from their houses to the garden. They're walking from the garden back to the houses. Um, it's health benefits. I mean, you build a community because you're actually out talking to people. Um, for instance, uh, 
We got some people that won't walk around the garden or walk this way unless they see somebody in the garden, you know, so um, that's, that, that's the way for community gardens to help neighborhoods. Um, it's, it's still a growing process. It's, we still trying to figure out some things like how to keep people from dumping. They're not dumping where the gardens are anymore, but um, there's other places in the neighborhood that people had previously dumped and are still dumping. So. Uh, I know we can't plant gardens everywhere, so uh, we're, we're still trying to figure out how to keep people from, or at least teach people how to take pride in the neighborhood, that way they won't jump, or at least, you know, they'll be able to um, stop people, or when they see people, don't learn how to report it. Yeah, I mean, getting involved, period. I mean, whatever it is, you know, um, going to the local schools and mentoring and tutoring, or just being a, a, a visible body when kids are walking back and forth to school, um, you know, patrolling your neighborhood. You know, I'm not saying, you know, vigil vigilanteism, but, you know, to just be visible, you know, where people can see you, you know, and I think a community garden, you know, people being out in the community garden just deters crime because there's people out in the neighborhood, they're walking the neighborhood, and, you know, it, it keeps people from doing stuff that they ain't got no business doing. Our main goal is to, to try to bring back community. Um, however, however way we do it, educationally, like by mentoring and tutoring the kids and adults, um, and trying to give people you know something to do and help whenever, wherever, and whenever we can. I mean, some people don't want a community garden in their neighborhood. They'd rather see you know houses built or businesses built. Um, I guess, I guess you would have to like, get involved. Um, I, I know there's a lot of people that got different ideas for different businesses and trying to figure out ways to, to you know, uh, produce those businesses, you know, back into the city. But um, I think the main thing is probably, and I know a lot of people don't want to hear this, but move back to the city, you know. Um, we don't have a tax base anymore, so a lot of services and different things. Even the population has a has a, a toll on you know different things that happen. But um, I, number one would be moving back and then creating different businesses. But I know that's it goes into a whole different level because you know for people to move back, you gotta do something about the crime. You gotta do something about the blight. You know. But community gardens is a way to do something about the blight. Forty-two percent of you indicate emerging industries, followed by twenty-eight percent um, who, who reference small business growth and or entrepreneurship as the greatest potentials for economic impact on Detroit's future. Um, to donate to George Street, you can send a check or money order <laughs> or cash <laughs> to uh, 9352 Georgia Street, Detroit, Michigan, 48213. Or you can go to our blog, and there's a PayPal button uh, at georgiastreetgarden.blogspot.com.